Let's sketch the quadratic surface given by z equals x squared over 16 plus y squared over 4. To begin, I'm going to sketch this on graph paper in an x, y, z coordinate system. In this x, y, z coordinate system, we're going to do a nice convenient set of units. Every two squares on the y-axis will correspond to one unit. Every two squares on the z-axis will also correspond to one unit. The x-axis is going to be a little bit weird because we drew it with some perspective. So I'll make about every this distance equal to one unit along the x-axis. To construct the trace, let's begin by determining the x, y, and z intercepts if they exist for this quadric surface. The x, y, and z intercepts for this quadric surface would be given by setting the other two variables equal to zero. For example, the x-intercept would occur by setting the variables y equal to zero and z equals to zero. That would leave us with the equation x equals zero for the x-intercept. That occurs at only one location, at the origin. The y-intercept is given by setting x equals to 0 and z equals to 0. This will also give us the y-intercept being at y equals 0, which happens to be at the origin. And finally, the z-intercept is given by setting x equals to 0 and y equal to 0. Plugging into our equation, we get the z-intercept is equal to 0. So we only have one intercept, and that one intercept occurs at the origin. Now, looking at this function, being a quadric surface, my guess is that this quadric surface is going to represent a paraboloid. Basically, a paraboloid is a three-dimensional parabola, in essence. Imagine a parabola. Imagine rotating that parabola around an axis that passes through its vertex. And it kind of would look like a cone or, or a cup, not a cone. A chalice, maybe. This is what a typical paraboloid looks like. And from the equation, I've come to recognize that equations of this form end up being paraboloids. So that would be something good for you to recognize as well. However, it might take some time and experience before you can recognize that. So let's go ahead and use a tool at our disposal to help us recognize we are dealing with a paraboloid. That tool at our disposal is called the trace. Remember, a trace is given by the line of intersection between a plane that's parallel to one of the coordinate axes and the surface in which it intercepts. I usually like to begin with traces occurring at the um, occurring through and along with the coordinate axes. 
So for example, if we were to do the, we'll say the ZY trace or the YZ trace, the YZ trace occurs by finding a plane that is parallel to the YZ axis. So that plane that is parallel to the YZ axis will have a normal vector that is parallel to the X axis. So an equation that describes that plane is simply X equals zero. Let's replace zero in, in place of X in our equation. This would give us z equals y squared over 4. Here's a question for you. What type of graph would be created from the equation z equals y squared over 4? Does that kind of equation look familiar to you? Well, if you said a parabola in the yz plane, you'd be exactly right. The equation z equals y squared over 4 is a parabola. It's a parabola in the yz plane. Let's go ahead and sketch that parabola. And, you know, to give me some perspective, Because of the denominator of 4, I know this is going to be kind of a wide parabola. So this is just a sketch. We don't have to be 100% precise. This parabola is represented by the equation of y squared over 4. And it's created again by taking a plane that is parallel to the yz plane, finding the line of intersection between it and our quadric surfaces equation, and that line of intersection gives us a trace. So this is what it looks like through the yz plane when x is equal to zero. Okay, so a parabola, awesome. Let's do another trace. This time, let's do the, let's see, let's do the ZX trace. So the ZX trace is given by taking a plane parallel to the ZX axis. A plane parallel to the ZX axis will have a vector that's parallel to the y-axis. Or let me rephrase that. A plane parallel to the zx plane, rather, will have a vector normal to it that's parallel to the y-axis. That plane is positioned at the origin, or rather, at the value y equals 0. So the equation of our plane is the equation y equals 0. Substituting y equals 0 into our equation for the quadric surface gives us the equation z equals x squared over 16. Looking at this, we see that we have another parabola. This parabola, however, is in the zx plane. Because of the 16 in the denominator, it's looking like this parabola is going to be even fatter than the parabola that's in the yz plane. Might be difficult to get really good perspective on that. I'll try my best. Okay. Now that looks kind of weird. That's not looking much like a parabola to you, probably. 
Well, that's because it is... Okay, we drew a couple of lines. We have a parabola in the zy plane, a parabola in the zx plane. This is enough for me, and we have a we have a, all of our intercepts. We have only one intercept at the origin. Experience tells me I have enough to recognize that this is a parabola, but. Let's see, let's do, just do, let's try another trace. Let's see what the XY trace would give us. So the XY trace is the trace created by setting Z equals to zero. That Z equals to zero is the equation of a plane that is parallel to the Z or to the XY coordinate plane. That plane parallel to the xy coordinate plane has a unit vector that is parallel to the z-axis. This would give us the equation of 0 equals x squared over 16 plus y squared over 4. Hmm, let's think about this a little bit. This would be then x squared, and here we'll say x squared over 16 is equal to minus y squared over 4. Hmm. Wow, the only place where this is possible is, at, is when x equals y equals 0. Any other value would give us an imaginary solution. Okay, so the xy trace is just a point at the origin. So that doesn't really help us very much. So instead of doing an xy trace with the plane that is lying in the xy plane, let's choose a different trace. This next trace will still be parallel to the xy plane, but we're going to choose a non-zero value for z. Let's look at that xy trace with a non-zero value of z on the next page. We'll just copy our graph to this page. We could pick any arbitrary value for z. Well, let's pick a positive value for z, because if we had negative value for z, we might have some complications there. So let's pick an arbitrary value for z. Let's say z is equal to some constant c. This would mean that our equation is c equals x squared over 16 plus y squared over 4. Okay. Well, does this look like an equation that you might have seen before? What if we divided both sides by this constant c? So if we divided both sides by this constant c, we would have 1 equals x squared over 16c plus y squared over 4c. And you know what? If we just take those denominators, let's go ahead and call the denominator of the x squared term, let's call it a squared. And let's call the denominator of the y squared term, let's just call that b squared. Does this look like an equation you're familiar with? 
If you said ellipsoid, or not an ellipsoid, if you said an ellipse, if you said an ellipse that is in the xy plane, you'd be absolutely right. So notice x squared over 16c and y squared over 4c gives us an ellipse that is parallel to the xy plane at whatever value for z we choose. Now remember, we are setting z equals to a constant. Since we are setting z equals to a constant, that means we are taking a plane whose equation is z equals c such that that plane is parallel to the xy coordinate system. And depending on the value of c, this ellipse would be bigger and bigger and bigger in the xy plane. So for example, if c is equal to 1, remember that would correspond to z is equal to 1, we would end up with the ellipse x squared over 16 plus y squared over 4 is equal to 1. Well, let's look at that. z equals to 1 would be at the value of z equals to 1. And let's go ahead and sketch our ellipse. So our ellipse uh, would have a major axis of about a radius of 2, minor axis of about a radius of, or I got that backwards, a major axis of total length 4. That's given by the 16. We have a major axis whose length is 8. That's given by this term 16. The major axis has a radius of the square root of that. And the minor axis has a length of a total of 4 because the square root of 4 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. If we were to plot that, that would look something like this. Because the xy trace is an ellipse, the yz trace is a parabola, and the zx trace is a parabola, for all those reasons and because we have one intercept at the origin, I know that this is going to be the equation of a paraboloid. Our shape is a paraboloid. So let's clean up our shape a little bit. I am just going to redraw these such that it reflects more of the shape that we know it to be. Here is our paraboloid. Notice how we have the x, y, or notice how we have a trace for some non-zero positive value of z. We have a y, z trace, and we have an z, x trace. And with these traces and with the trace that is, with these traces, we are able to sketch this paraboloid.